Welcome back to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Today we answer the age-old question. Can regular JB Weld withstand going the speed of sound? Huh, guess it's the first time it's ever been brought up, but we're still gonna find out. Big thank you to our friends over at Wildman Rocketry for making this possible. This is a Wildman Mini Mach 38 millimeter minimum diameter kit but with fiberglass airframe and nose cone instead of their carbon one. It does still have carbon fiber fins. These are Mach 2 fins for another project that we'll get into later. For now, we're gonna start taking some measurements and use my fancy new tool. The first thing I did was measure the exact outside diameter of the tube in inches and then the width of the fins as well. After we had this data, it was time to move on to some very serious engineering and programming. <sighs> Of course, that's true, but I wasn't the one doing the engineering or programming. Somebody else already did it, but it's a super cool interactive file with changeable parameters so you can make a 3D print file for a fin alignment guide for any size rocket. It's super, super cool. I'll put the link to it in the description. You can do it with fin cans too. After I got the alignment guides where I wanted them, I slammed them in Kira and then set it up to print. Oh boy. It was printing so good, I swear. As soon as it comes time to perform the no shot. All right. I cleaned the build plate, sprayed it with hairspray. I had really good luck with that in the first place. Don't know why it didn't want to stick this time, just on that side of the bed, so we auto leveled it. We just gotta roll out everything. Hey, look at that. Auto leveling seems to be working. All right, so those printed up pretty nicely, but I realized very quickly that having them both the same size was not going to work with the uh, rear sweep on this fin design. So I had to print up another one that was just a little bit bigger to accommodate the full size of the fins. After that was out of the way, I was ready to glue everything together. So I put the fins on one at a time, and by that I mean I was going to, and then got super greedy and put the last three on at once. Then after 24 hours of drying, I just peeled off my fin alignment guides and set them aside to use in case I ever make another 38 minimum diameter. Now you can see looking inside there that all of the roots of the fins have JB Weld securely attaching it to the airframe for the entire length of their root. It looks pretty good. So uh, now we're just gonna hang it up and let it dry for 24 hours instead of continuing to mess with it like I really wanted to. So once again, the fillet channel strikes, but this time it's JB Weld only. I couldn't get a piece of tape in the middle to keep the lines clean, so there's a little cleanup after work that's going to have to be done. But now we have four JB Weld fillets all put together. So now I had to address where I'm gonna anchor the shock cord. Since I'm flying this minimum diameter and using motor deploy, I can't modify the front of the motor and just attach a shock cord to it like I did with my 54 minimum diameter. Well, I've got a 3D printer now, so I used that as my solution. I 3D printed this little cylinder that's gonna be glued into the upper part of the airframe and I'm gonna attach my shock cord directly to that and then attach it to the eye bolt in the tip of the nose cone and voila, this thing's ready to fly. <laughs> Oh guys, it all seemed so easy, didn't it? It was supposed to be a simple project just to test the JB Weld. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to put on a show, but spectacularly, I wanted to put a DMS Aerotech I-500 in this, which Ras Aero says would go 13,000 feet and Mach 1.33. So I even got one. <laughs> Ras Aero says that this rocket on an I-500 will go 13,000 feet and Mach 1.33. That's not my concern. The JB Weld's gonna handle it. I promise that I'm almost positive. However, the thing I slightly overlooked is that the maximum motor eject delay for an I-500 is 14 seconds. And if you'll recall that piece that's now <laughs> glued in, uh, that would allow me to use motor deploy is uh is glued in brass arrow says that this rocket on an i-500 will take 24 seconds to get to aperture that's a lot more than 14 and i did consider the burn time it took me a second to get there but i did get there and it's only a 1.2 second burn 
at 15.2 seconds, i.e. the time that the motor would deploy. Brass Arrow says this rocket's still going to be going 341 feet per second, or Mach 0.3, so uh, a few hundred miles an hour. <laughs> we can't, we can't do that. All right, so I created a little problem for myself, as you guys saw. I needed a pyro deploying altimeter and a battery in a space of one and a half by three inches. What does a pretend engineer like me do? I present a solution. And that solution is right here. I designed and 3D printed a nice little sled with a slot to hold a 2S LiPo battery that has 250 milliamp hour capacity in the back and has an open spot on the front of the sled with just enough room for a MissileWorks RRC2 Plus altimeter. It's not a fancy data logging altimeter, but it does have pyro channels so we can control ejection and that's all we need it to do. I then made a little coupler that it slides inside of and uh, was the plan initially was to glue this in on top of the motor block slash shock cord anchor that I had already put there and then move the shock cord to be anchored with this. So you can see here I'm struggling with drilling the holes out, which I realized was kind of a stupid thing. You can tell I'm new to 3D printing by the fact that I didn't design the holes for the all thread into the design file. I don't know why. You have to think someone who didn't drop out of engineering school would have figured that one out earlier, but uh, here we are. So for the next little bit, I spent some time getting this thing assembled and everything aligned the way I want it. I cut a piece of all thread, glued the nut to the bottom, trimmed it to the size that I needed, and I mounted up the altimeter so we could get everything in and make sure everything was going to fit. And then this happened. The motor block that I initially thought I had no chance of getting out actually came out a little bit easier than I anticipated, just on a whim thinking I should at least try to take it out, and what do you know, it came out. So, I was now left in a position where I could cut the tube and make it a traditional dual deploy setup or even just make it easier to put an electronics bay in, and then I was faced with the tough decision to decide if I thought my 3D printed coupler was strong enough for that. Do you have a kit? that is 38 millimeter. Um, oh, the mini dark star? Yeah, is that a one and a half or is it a two inch? I think it's a, I think it's got a 29 more mount. Yeah, I think it's a one and a half. It's um, got the dual deploy upgrade, right? Right. Is there any chance I could get that coupler and then just order you a new one? Yeah, sure. And just like that, we're off to the races. I'm back in my element, making an electronics bay in a fiberglass coupler with aluminum bulk plates, even though I vowed I would never make anything smaller in a 54 millimeter electronics bay because I hated doing 54. Why not shave an extra half an inch off of it, right? So the nightmare ensued of making my sled that I made for my 3D printed coupler that had thinner walls fit inside this guy. Then using the actual i500 motor case, I measured out where I needed to cut the tube and then I cut the tube. After that we got the coupler put in, drilled all the holes, there's four rivets, it's not separating right here, it's only popping the nose off, it's not dual deploy. Drilled all the vent holes and drilled my halfy switch hole. That serves as an easy middle ground to get my switch wires out of so that I can just quickly twist them together, tape it to the rocket and then fly it. And then. Guess what? This happened. Make sure my motor still fits or I'm gonna go crazy. Oh. Hey guys, Braden here. Let me save you from all the swearing. I cut on the wrong side of the blue tape I used to mark the tube, so it was about half an inch too short to fit the i500. So I cut the coupler even shorter and then cut my sled even shorter, but it is all together now. The moment of truth, I have yet to test fit the i500 in there since I cut the coupler down. Everything is in and I have yet to fire the altimeter back up since I had to stuff it into a ex almost exactly 3 inch coupler which is funny because now the fiberglass coupler is pretty much the exact length a little bit longer than the original 3D printed guy. I had designed, the amount of times this design has changed in the past few days is hilarious, but now we have a lot more room for uh, 
activities because uh, I, I have managed to fit a whole 18 inch parachute in that nose cone pretty easily and it came out pretty easily but we're not like I said we're doing a streamer no dual deploy nothing fancy I didn't even want to put electronics in it and now you know why all right step one i500 come on okay we're good and that means it can fit any 720 load as well because here's my nice desert fire 720 case j500 no problem hey just in case you didn't know joanne fabric sells ripstop nylon in a few different colors i made this streamer it's not pretty but it'll function i just wrapped a little piece of kevlar and then uh, about to shrink this heat shrink around it and then we got a nice little loop but it's a three inch by five foot streamer and it cost me about i don't know with that kevlar probably two bucks to make if you're better at sewing than me you can make parachutes too okay ladies and gentlemen that completes the construction of our mini mock that we're using for the can jb weld go the speed of sound video is it pretty far from it there's kind of something really um uh, really calming in building a rocket that you don't really care about. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be so reckless with it that I'm going to be dangerous with it, but uh, all of this should be fine. Um, the electronics are properly vented. Electronic, the one. And uh, I might throw some shear pins in there or I might just put some tape on it. That's definitely too loose. Because this thing has made me so irritated, I'm almost rooting to never see it again, except for I want my altimeters back because we'll still be flying a flight sketch mini up here for an accelerometer reading, and I'll have a tracker in it, and my missile works RSC2+. Plus. But here's the thing. Uh, since I butchered this coupler, and I was like, maybe if I keep it nice enough, I can just give it back to my dad, and then he can just use those holes. It'd be kind of difficult, but use those holes for his Dark Star. But I've butchered it. This thing, the coupler, it is going almost exactly an inch and a half in the bottom and then it goes up a little bit higher into the top section. There's no sketchy wobbling going on or anything, so we're fine. Um, it's a little bit shorter than I'm sure some people would like it to be, but it is still one and a half inches in a one and a half inch tube. So this thing is safe to fly. Here's the thing, if I get it back, I'm going to give it to one of my Patreon supporters. I'll ship it to you. I'll handle everything. You get to have yourself a mini mock. And if you wanted to go through the process of, uh, you know, you could fly probably up to 600 motors and then do a shock cord down here, drill another hole, and you could do dual deploy. I don't know why you would torture yourself with doing a dual deploy 38 millimeter rocket. But if that's something you want to do, by all means, you absolutely could. So, yeah, I mean, the... The rivets aren't lined up even slightly. I just eyeballed everything and it is built with JB Weld. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna give it to one of my Patreon supporters if we get it back. I'm gonna keep the altimeter. This thing's not gonna be subject to a lot of fin flutter opportunities just because the fin span's so short, but they're so robust because they're carbon fiber. Um, I think this thing's gonna be just fine. Simulates to about Mach 1.3 and in ideal conditions, which this isn't in like 13,000 feet. Um, I'm going to say as long as the fins hold, it's going to probably do 11 and a half and then, uh, oh yeah. So people are asking about motor retention, um, just tape, I'm just friction fitting it. Uh, if you guys are familiar with my big daddy, that's always in the corner here. This flew last year at Airfest on a uh, CTI K740. And that rocket doesn't have a retainer either. It was just friction fit with masking tape and it came back just fine. You just have to know how to do it. And then I might run some aluminum tape around the thrust ring here. But uh, all in all, this is gonna be the last construction part of this video I post. The next thing you're gonna see is uh, me putting it on the launch pad. Oh, I gotta do rail guides. Okay, and the missile works altimeter on. Should beep once every five seconds.
Main charge only. We're good to go. Continuity test. We're good. All right, I'm just filming this with the short lens. Uh, I don't have anticipation I'll be able to keep up with it anyway. It's like a 71 thrust of weight. So I'm gonna get the best I can and then we'll go find it. Sorry while I figure this out. Um, we have JB Weld Warrior, Braden Carlson. It's an I-500. Little bitty rocket, gonna go way high. Um, 10,000 feet. So, uh, we probably won't see it for very long. Five, four, three, two, one. Gone. Oh no, I see it. I see it. Woohoo! I think I can see my streamer from here. Landed in the good area. Not a lot of cheat grass or sagebrush or anything to walk through. So that's pretty lucky. Hopefully it's all here. Hmm. It did not like the streamer impact. Ninety-eight twenty-six. Um, the rail guide made it all the way down. Unfortunately, my flight sketch mini did not. <laughs> it looks like it came untied. I had double knotted it, but I didn't put any tape around it. So. All right, I looped back around, kind of walking towards where the rocket went up to see if by some slight chance an orange box pops out at me, but my hopes aren't super high. Um, but yeah, overall good flight. With a shoot, it wouldn't have broke the fins, but it probably would have landed three miles away. Um, so yeah, no more flight sketch. I almost taped it to the shock cord like the tracker too, even though it's got the little Kevlar leader. And then I didn't, and I should have. So going into this, I was pretty confident this was going to work because I've already seen people fly JB Weld rockets pretty fast, but I figured a lot of you guys probably hadn't, so it would be a fun little project. So I want to say thank you again to Tim and Jackie and everyone at Wildman for always helping me out, sending me this kit so we could make this fun video. And uh, I'd like to do more stuff like this where it's, you know, a, a start to finish project built and flown in one video. I've been working on this video for the past couple weeks and, uh, I didn't intend on it having electronics in it, as you guys saw, so we had some workarounds to do, but we got it done. We flew it, we got the rocket back. We lost my flight sketch altimeter, which is unfortunate because it's really hard to get your hands on it right now, but, and I had never even flown it before. The only reason I wanted it was for proving how fast it went. So um, I don't know if I'll even really want to buy another one, but, we know it survived the boost. We know it went very fast. Sorry I didn't track it very well. It's very small and very fast, but uh, at any rate, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocky Vlogs. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and hit the bell and do all the YouTuber things. And uh, if you want to help support the channel and keep these projects coming like this, check out patreon.com slash rocket vlogs. I actually did a contest on Patreon uh, for everyone who supports me on Patreon to guess how high this rocket was going to go. Whoever guessed the closest won the rocket. So a guy named Dane, who is a Patreon supporter. Thank you, Dane. He uh, guessed 93.50. He was the closest without going over 98.26. 
so he gets this rocket unfortunately the fins are broken off but uh maybe he can uh get some more jb weld on there and fly it on something even crazier like a j570 or something like that it'd be pretty cool to see alternatively if you want to check out the merch store it's rocketvlogs.com it'll take you where you need to be and otherwise just thank you guys for tuning in i'm having a blast doing this thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers and uh yeah i'll see you next time